सो हेलो फ्रेंड्स नाउ वी आर मूविंग टू द नेक्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ आवर फार्माकोलॉजी डिस्कशन व्हिच वी आर डिस्कशन दैट इज जनरल फार्मा ओके नाउ वी हैव कम इन टू फार्माकोडाइनमिक्स डिस्कशन ओके इन आवर प्रीवियस पार्ट्स वी हैव कंप्लीटेड फार्माकोकाइनेटिक्स इन फुल डिटेल सो प्लीज वॉच दोज वीडियोज एंड ऑल्सो प्लीज 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 सब्सक्राइब आवर चैनल ओके यू विल गेट द बेस्ट कंटेंट ऑफ ऑल दोज दैट इज फार्मा और वेदर माइक्रो और pathology now coming to the pharmacodynamics so the first thing which we are going to discuss in pharmacodynamics about ligands okay whether it is agonist antagonist that now what is ligand so any molecule which has very high affinity for its target okay is ligand clear okay? they may be endogenous origin or exogenous in origin such as drugs or toxins which are coming from outside of the body or hormones or new neurotransmitter which are releasing inside the body so they are endogenous ligand and drugs toxins these are the exogenous toxins means only exogenous ligands now on the basis of their intrinsic activity means effect okay suppose this is a receptor drugs come and bind to this receptor so this binding is basically affinity and what its effects it is going to produce is known as intrinsic activity okay so they are either agonist or antagonist antagonist means zero or no effect okay it means zero intrinsic activity and what are known as blockers blockers are generally having zero intrinsic activity okay we are knowing now that the receptor and if we give any blocker this blocker will come and block this receptor blocker means zero intrinsic activity there will be no effect clear now when we talk about agonist then this will produce some effect and on the basis of how much effect it is going to produce it is again divided into three categories the first is your full agonist the second group is your partial agonist and the third is your inverse agonist full agonist means maximum effect is produced and its intrinsic activity value is plus 1 okay intrinsic activity value is plus 1 means it is giving full effect maximum effect now the second is partial agonist partial agonist means having sub maximal effect okay means effect between 0 to 1 okay it has low intrinsic activity i want to say now in inverse agonist opposite effect will be shown so the numericals there is minus 1 will okay it has negative intrinsic activity minus 1 clear and some are super agonist which produces supra maximum effect that is more than one intrinsic activity so on the basis of how much effect the agonist is going to produce it is categorized into three group full agonist partial agonist and inverse agonist clear now moving to the next part example look on adrenaline is a full agonist propranolol beta blocker it is antagonist pindolol is a partial agonist and isoprenol it is a super agonist so remember the example of super agonist okay now coming to the antagonist so antagonist basically inhibit the action of agonist okay when we talk about antagonist antagonist just inhibit the action of agonist and it is categorized into four group physical antagonist then chemical antagonist physiological antagonist and pharmacological antagonist pharmacological antagonist are basically known as blockers okay now coming to the physical antagonist so it agonist uh, basically agonist antagonist both binds with the physical bonds so it is uh, described as physical antagonist okay agonist adsorb the surface of to the surface of antagonist activity charcoal is basically example of physical antagonist chemical antagonist here agonist and antagonist bind with chemical bonds either it is covalent or ionic example stannic acid kmn4 like this clear yeah? remember this protamine sulfate because this is antidote for heparin now physiological antagonist i will discuss later on then pharmacological antagonist is also known as blocker now physio physiological antagonist example histamine and adrenaline it is h1 receptor stimulator it is beta 2 okay receptor wise they are not related but mechanism wise physiological response wise they are related okay histamine producing bronchoconstriction whereas adrenaline producing bronchodilation so physiologically they are antagonist antagonizing each other effects when we talk about leukotrienes and salbutamol same again here insulin growth hormone glucagon same effect parathyroid hormone calcitonin same effect when we talk about thromboxane to prostacycline the effect is going to be same okay so these all are physiological antagonist remember this now coming to the pharmacological antagonist so it is again divided into two group complete antagonist and non competitive antagonist sorry complete competitive antagonist and non competitive antagonist this is not complete competitive so here the antagonist will bind to the same site okay where the agonist is going to bind clear here it binds to a different site now here you will get surmountable effect that is overcome the effect of competitive antagonist by increasing the dose of agonist if you will increase the dose of agonist you will overcome the effect of competitive antagonist 
but in cases of non competitive it has non surmountable effect you are not uh, it will be not easy to overcome the effect clear now competitive antagonist commander reversal they are also re known as reversal blocker they are mostly irreversible blockers clear now coming to the one of the most important thing that is dose response curve okay very very important and frequently asked in your examination frequently now we have to uh, look for the what are the basically uses for the dose response curve okay what are the uses for dose response curve on x axis we we plot dose and on y axis we plot response clear so these things are not important we are directly going for the uh, dose response curve uses in pharmacology so first shape normal drc is hyperbola or parabolic normal drc when you uh, put on x axis dose and response on y axis but on parabolic it is very difficult to estimate the change okay and a small change in dose produces maximum response hence normal drc is of no use so we have use log dose versus response curve okay so this is log dose versus response curve and see in this between the straight line is coming so you can easily use y is equal to mx plus c and derive the response and dose relation so it is very easy so we have uh, use it, we have taken log dose yeah. and beta variation is also seen this is another reason now two types of log dose response curve the first one is your graded log drc the second one is your quantile log drc graded log drc example of this is uh, i will discuss what the basically graded log drc will indicate when quantile log drc will be used okay so you have to remember these two things efficacy and potency these two things are determined by graded log drc okay we have to measure the response in one individual efficacy and potency whereas quantile log drc means it measures the effect in population okay and we measure here effective dose toxic dose and therapeutic index so basically quantile log drc is used for population and in this we consider about effective dose toxic dose and therapeutic index whereas in graded log drc we are just concerning about the efficacy or potency of the particular drug so here graded log drc is seen now coming to the efficacy and potency what are the two things very very frequently asked this is frequently asked question in viva examination frequently most probable questions now efficacy so maximum response produced by drug irrespective of dose okay maximum response produced by drug irrespective of dose is known as efficacy and dose required to produce 50 percent response remember this dose required to produce 50 percent response is known as potency and maximum response which is produced by drug irrespective of dose is known as efficacy clear it is determined on the basis of height or slope okay and one more thing lower dose means more potent okay so suppose 20 gram drug produces 50 percent response and another 50 gram same producing 50 percent response so low dose means more potent this drug is more potent so remember difference between potency and efficacy that is the most confusing part clear okay now we have given example drug a b c d c here when we comparing efficacy look for b okay b eff efficacy means this maximum response this is so b is only here okay and d is this so d has more more efficacy in compared to b but when we talk about potency then you have to look for the dose so look for this okay here you can uh, basically you can compare the dose okay when you will talk about potency but minimum dose required to produce the particular response means 50 percent response clear in your point okay Sorry. so let's move to the next you have to just remember the definition efficacy means maximum response produced by drug irrespective of dose here dose required to produce 50 percent response clear you can easily draw a graph and you can easily do that okay suppose this is the dose this is one drug okay this is the second drug suppose this is the second drug so see 50 percent response when you uh, count about the dose and with you will look for the response okay so those drugs which are using less dose when you when you are giving that particular drug in low dose and that producing 50 percent response that is means that is more potent okay let's move to the next coming to the quantile log drc sorry so it compares basically toxic dose and lethal dose so first coming to the effective dose so dose which produces effective response in 50 percent population is known as ed50 okay ed90 is also there dose which produces effective response in 90 percent population we use it ed50 okay that is uh, sorry this is effective dose ed50 we will use clear 
now coming to the next part therapeutic index what is therapeutic index so it is lethal dose 50 upon effective dose 50 okay lethal dose 50 effective dose 50 and suppose if this value is low means less than 2 means that drug are unsafe and that drug is also known as narrow having narrow therapeutic index okay okay so therapeutic index value if less than 2 means that drug are unsafe okay means narrow therapeutic index drug are unsafe to use okay the drug has low safety margin so it requires continuous monitoring so we have to continuously monitor the drug that is also known as therapeutic monitoring clear okay so you have to remember the drugs which needs therapeutic monitoring digoxin very important anti-epileptics aminoglycosides theophylline lithium anti-cancer drug tca cyclosporine and methotrexates these drugs need to be continuously monitored by doctor okay so here given when you have to perform therapy drug monitoring when to do so narrow if there is narrow therapeutic index or effect cannot be determined or nephrotoxic drug which is given in renal failure patient to check compliance of drug or to check poisoning of drug these are the five indications for therapy drug monitoring and these are the when wide therapeutic index is there there is no need to drug monitor monitoring okay so and the last usef drc like this it is seen in hormones vitamins and minerals okay so this is about your drc and that we will in next video we will discuss about the receptor part okay so thank you for watching best of luck and please 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 subscribe our channel okay for getting more videos like this